Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for tuning on in. Today I'm going to bring you another episode of which national lab you should work at. The reason for me making this video is the last time I made a video like this, I discussed three national labs. Oak Ridge, Los Alamos, and Sandia. And that was great because I could bring in my own personal experience. However, it only covered three of the 16 US DOE national labs in the United States. So to be fair and show everybody else some love, I decided I was going to make a video discussing all of them. Now, obviously, doing 16 in one video is kind of a lot. So I'm going to break it up into two videos. The labs on the west side of the nation and the labs on the east side of the nation. So before we get too far into the weeds, I want to talk a little bit about the scope of this video and the next one that will follow it. I'm going to be talking about Department of Energy federally funded research and development centers. So I'm not going to be talking about any other DOE facility like Y12 or Pantax or the Kansas City plant. Likewise, I'm also not going to be talking about other FFRDCs like Lincoln Labs or JPL. There's some really smart people outside of Boston and in Pasadena, but this is going to be dealing only with the United States Department of Energy Labs. And like I said earlier, it will split it up into two parts, the aid on the west side of the states and the aid on the east side of the states. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about labs on the west side of the United States. It's where I prefer to hang out to each their own. So the first lab on the list is Idaho National Lab in Idaho Falls, Idaho. It was founded in 1949 and has a budget of approximately $2 billion and employs 5,000 employees. So currently, the U.S. military pegs BAH for an 01 with no dependents at $1,227 a month. Likewise, the fair market rent for a two-bedroom apartment in Idaho Falls is $865 a month. Currently, the median sale price of a house in Idaho Falls is $383,000. That's down from $420,000 just a few months ago. Idaho was part of a big housing boom a couple years ago, and now they're starting to see a big bust. Idaho Falls is no exception. Granted, people that work out at the facilities at Idaho National Lab have a shorter drive from Arco than they do from Idaho Falls. So you really just have to pick your poison there. So the estimated take home pay in Idaho for somebody making 80 grand a year is about $57,000 each year or $47,89 a month. Likewise, the estimated take home pay for somebody earning $120,000 a year is $82,000 a year or $6,868 a month. If you subtract estimated housing costs from estimated take home pay, you end up with an early career disposable income of 39 dollars a month. So Idaho Falls is a medium-sized town at about 64,000 residents. There are roughly 280,000 residents within that entire combined statistical area. The Koppen climate classification in Idaho Falls is classified as a warm summer humid continental climate. In the wintertime there's plenty of snow and you're within a day's drive of a bunch of phenomenal ski areas. I'll make a different video on that but you're within three hours of a big sky Sun Valley, Jackson Hole, and Target. You have some of the best skiing in America in your backyard. So the second lab on the list is Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, up the hill from UC Berkeley in Berkeley, California, pretty close to Oakland. This is the oldest lab on the list, founded in 1931. It employs 3,663 people and has an annual budget of $1.02 billion. The whole Bay Area is very, very expensive to live in, and Berkeley's no exception. The U.S. military pegs BAH for an 01 at $28.50 a month. The fair market rent for Santa Clara County is $22.74 a month. On top of that, the median house price is $1.375 million. Additionally, your estimated take home pay if you're earning 80 grand a year is right around $56,000 a year. That's $4,682 a month. If you're earning $120,000 a year, your estimated take home pay is going to be just north of $79,000 a year, or about $6,600 a month. When you subtract out rent and taxes, your early career disposable income is estimated to be $2,400 a month. There's not a lot left over. So the next lab on the list is Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. It's just inland to Berkeley by about 30 or 40 minutes. Lawrence Livermore was founded in 1952. It has a budget of $2.82 billion a year and has a total of 8,172 employees. Just like Lawrence Berkeley, the BAH in the Bay Area is $2,850 a month. For a two-bedroom apartment, the fair market rent is estimated to be $2,274 a month. Not cheap. However, the cost of a house in Livermore is slightly less than that in Berkeley at $1.05 million. 
the take home pay if you're making 80 grand a year is right around $56,000, which is about 4,682 bucks a month. Additionally, the take home if you're making $120,000 a year is $79,000 a year, which comes out to 6607 per month. Just like at Lawrence Berkeley, your early career disposable income is 2408 a month, which isn't a whole lot. The next lab on the list is Los Alamos National Lab. It was founded in 1943 by J. Robert Oppenheimer in Los Alamos, New Mexico. The U.S. military puts BAH for an 01 in Los Alamos right at $15.39 a month. Likewise, the fair market rent for a two-bedroom apartment in Los Alamos is $10.68 a month. The median sale price for a house in Los Alamos is $460,000 according to Redfin. In Los Alamos, if you're making 80 grand a year, your estimated take home pay after taxes is $59,000 a year. That translates to 4,900 bucks a month when you spread things out month to month. Likewise, if you're making $120,000 a year, you can expect to take home just north of 84 grand a year. When you break that down month to month, it's 7,036 bucks a month. Subtracting things out, your early career disposable income will be about 3,836 bucks a month. In Los Alamos. Los Alamos's climate is classified as DFB, which is warm summer humid continental. The town of Los Alamos is relatively small at only 13,000. So the next lab on the list is the National Renewable Energy Lab, also known as NREL. It was founded in 1977 in Golden, Colorado. That's where they make Coors. Compared to the other labs, NREL is relatively small. It has 2,974 employees and an annual budget of $599 million. The U.S. military puts BAH for an 01 at 1878 per month. Likewise, the fair market value for a two-bedroom apartment is $1,659 a month. The median home sale price in Golden, Colorado was $728,000. If you're making 80 grand a year, your estimated take-home pay living in Golden will be about 58 grand a year after taxes. That comes out to $4,844 a month. Likewise, if you're making 120 grand a year, your estimated take home pay after taxes comes in just shy of 84 grand a year, which is just under 7 grand a month. That puts your early career disposable income at 3185 a month. Plus, you're a little bit west of Denver, so if you try to go ski on the weekend, you'll probably beat traffic from all the people trying to leave Denver. But then again, if you're interested in skiing, you should probably be working at Idaho National Lab instead of NRO. So the next lab on the list is Pacific Northwest National Lab in Richland, Washington. It was founded in 1965 and continues to operate today in the southeast corner of Washington State. The U.S. military puts BAH at $14.58 a month, and the fair market value for a two-bedroom apartment is $10.60 a month. The median sale price for a house in Richland is $430,000. That's down from half a million just a few months ago. Your estimated take-home pay, if you're making 80 grand a year, is 61 grand a year. That comes out to 5,100 bucks a month when you average over 12 months. This is the highest out of anywhere because Washington State does not have an income tax. Likewise, if you're making $120,000 salary, you're going to be taking home roughly $89,000 a year. That comes out to roughly 7,400 bucks a month. The early career disposable income is actually highest at Pacific Northwest at $4,057 a month. This is due to the low cost of housing plus no state income tax. Richland, Washington has a population of just over 50,000 people. The combined statistical area is just under 300,000 people. It's not a huge city, but there seems to be plenty of things to do and plenty of towns close by. Number seven on the list is my personal favorite, Sandia National Labs. I shouldn't say that. I'm not going to put that in the video. Number seven on the list is Sandia National Labs in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It was founded in 1945 and continues to run to this day. Most of the labs are actually in Albuquerque, but there are a few offices in Livermore, plus a test facility in Hawaii and some offices in DC. Across all the sites, Sandia Labs employs roughly 14,500 people and has an annual budget of $3.9 billion. The U.S. military rates BAH in Albuquerque at $1,473 a month. The fair market value for a two-bedroom apartment in Albuquerque is $996 a month. Uh, me living here, I think that's a little low, but that's what the website said. The median sale price of a home in Albuquerque is $315,000. That's stayed the same over the past few months. By and large, we're more or less insulated from a crash, or it's not going to be as bad here, I don't think. I hope. Your estimated take-home pay if you're making 80 grand a year in New Mexico comes in at just under 59,000 bucks a year, 
or 4,900 bucks a month. Likewise, if you're making 120,000 bucks a year, your estimated take home pay is gonna be 84 grand a year after taxes, which comes into just over seven grand a month. When you calculate the early career disposable income, it comes out to 3,908 a month, which is a decent chunk of change. I would describe Albuquerque as a large town. It doesn't really have a big city feel, but the population within the city limits is right around 564,000 people. The last DOE lab out west we're going to be talking about is the SLAC National Accelerator Facility in Menlo Park, right next to Stanford. It was founded in 1962, and it's run by Stanford to do high energy experiments. I couldn't find a good budget number for this lab. In 2017, its budget was $383 million and it employs approximately 1,600 employees, but I couldn't find any hard verifiable numbers, so this is just an estimate. Silicon Valley is among the most expensive places in the United States to live. The U.S. military puts BAH at 3,213 bucks a month. Likewise, the fair market rent for a two-bedroom apartment is 2,868 bucks a month, which may be considered low for San Jose but that's the numbers that I could come up with online. The median sale price for a house in Menlo Park, California is $2.825 million. <laughs> Good luck buying a house if you work here. If you're early career and making 80 grand a year, you can expect to take home just over 56,000 bucks a year. Per month, that comes in at just under 4,700 bucks a month after taxes. California has high taxes, it's just the way it goes. Likewise, if you're making 120 grand a year, you can expect to take home 79,000 after taxes. That comes in at roughly 6,600 bucks a month. Calculating the early career disposable income, because the taxes are so high and so is the rent, you're left with 1,814 bucks a month. This is the lowest out of any of the eight labs out west. While the individual towns within the Bay Area and Silicon Valley are relatively small, you're talking 30, 40,000 people, the Bay Area as a whole has a population of roughly 9.5 million people. So as you can see, your disposable income, if you're making 80 grand a year, varies wildly depending on where you work. If you're in the Bay Area, your disposable income is going to be around 1,800 bucks a month. Likewise, if you're in Idaho or Washington, you could see something close to four grand a month simply because it's so cheap to live there and the taxes are relatively low. If you're considering working in any of these labs, I hope you found this video useful. Or if you're just curious and wanted to know a little bit about how much it, it costs to live at a certain place or where the labs are. Either way, I really appreciate you watching and hopefully you'll tune into the next video. We'll catch you in the next one.